How amazing to have um, an education that will really allow us to become completely familiar with who we are. And this is what you find in the Balanced View training, a comprehensive education in the nature of mind. And it's an educational program that allows you to identify the nature of your mind and then to train up in that and to become confident and stable in relying on this, this opening intelligence that is always the basis of your experience. So we can look at our own experience and we can see that the thoughts, emotions and sensations, what we can just call data, are continually changing. And you can look at your own experience right now. And look at the thoughts as they come up and resolve naturally, the different sensations in your body. See, all of these are continually changing. But there's something that's constant in your experience. There's something that doesn't change. There's this intelligence by which all of this is known. And it's always been there. Nobody can give it to you and nobody can take it away. All we're doing here is learning to identify it and then to rely on that and emphasize this opening intelligence rather than the continually changing data, the content. And the simple instruction of taking short moments of allowing the data just to flow on by, allowing the data to be however it is, and instead emphasizing the open intelligence that is the essence and source of the data and inseparable from it, really allows us to become familiar with the actual nature of our mind. Now this opening intelligence, like I said, has always been there. We'd simply ignored it. It had gone unnoticed. And the introduction to it, when we stop thinking for a moment, we allow ourselves <laughs> to notice this intelligence. But it's the same intelligence that is the basis of our thoughts as it is when we stop thinking. And these short moments of allowing the data just to be exactly as it is, allow us to identify in our own experience this vast mind, this opening intelligence. And for me that first introduction was incredibly powerful because it, because it was my own experience. It was something that I could identify for myself. And then when I heard about the practice of short moments repeated many times until it becomes continuous, I was like, yes, that's something that you know, I, I can try for myself. This is something that I can test out in my everyday experience of life and see what happens. And pri prior to this training, my <coughs> experience of opening intelligence was very, very fleeting and very elusive. Something that seemed mysterious, it seemed esoteric, it seemed far removed from my everyday experience of life. And as I began to train up using the Four Mainstays, the obviousness of this intelligence just became brighter and brighter in a very gentle, effortless way. So the practice of short moments is the first of the mainstays. And for me this was incredible because I could apply it wherever I was. And at the beginning, when I was sat in the open meetings like this, that was the times when it seemed easiest just to relax and to allow all of the data just to be however they were, and to notice that open intelligence was already naturally present and completely stable, completely wide open like a, a cloudless sky. And so I could see in these meetings that I, I had a choice. You know, I could either focus on all of the data, on the continually changing descriptions, and I could see that that is actually what I had been doing for all of my adult life, and I could see the results of doing that. I could see that every time I focused in and emphasized the descriptions, there was this tension. I was trying to build a world based on these descriptions that were continually changing. And because I was trying to build a world on descriptions that were continually changing, there was no stability there. And I was trying to grab onto space and make something out of space. And it was really hard work and it left me feeling 
really um, uncertain. So uncertain about what I was doing here, but much more practically uncertain about what I should say, you know, what I should do, what, what would be the best way to look after my own physical health, for example. You know, all of these practical questions, because I had so many ideas about everything, and they were all continually changing all the time. And then I'd meet somebody else and they'd give me another idea to put into that mix. It was really hard work and I felt uncertain about you know, how to be in the world, how to, you know, what I was meant to be doing with my life. Completely unsure on all aspects. And um, so by then beginning to train up this open intelligence and to begin to rely on it for short moments was incredible. But I could see very quickly that because I'd been trained in using my mind one way to focus in on all of the data and the descriptions, that even though now I could apply these short moments, I needed more support than that. Because it didn't... The introduction was fantastic and very powerful and very obvious and direct. But because I'd been trained up in using my mind in one way for so long, this introduction and even the short moments didn't seem to be enough. There would still be certain, certain descriptions, certain um, experiences, certain data streams that seemed so compelling that I just couldn't allow them to be as they were even for a short moment. And so this is where the rest of the support mechanism comes into play. But the support mechanism only works the educational program only works if you decide to use it. So it was all very well having these tools presented to me, but if I didn't use them, then they were going to be of no use. So after completing the 12 Empowerments, one of the foundation trainings, I had access to a, a, a trainer, somebody that was going to support me in a very personalised, customised way to empower myself and exalt my data exalt my experience and tap into my power to be of benefit. But I could see this was only going to work if I actually wrote to my trainer. And if I didn't write to my trainer, then that support mechanism was going to be of no use at all. So you have to decide whether this is something you're interested in and how far you want to take it. But this is beautiful, this is fantastic. For me, that was exactly what I needed. Now, I didn't want people telling me what to do. I wanted to decide for myself. So I tested out the support that was offered. There was the short moments, there was the trainer. There was the, the written trainings themselves and the media. And I tested them out. And I could see that every time I listened to a talk, it reminded me and brought me back to this vast open intelligence. Without me having to do anything. Okay, maybe I had to press play on my iPod or my computer. That was the kind of effort that I could deal with. Because everything else was so confusing, I didn't know where to turn my energy. Now how could I return to this openness? But this media was so direct and so unerring that it always pointed me back and pointed me back immediately to what was actually going on. What did I want to do with my mind? Did I want to focus on the descriptions? Or did I want to rely on open intelligence? And because I tested this out and seen the benefits for myself when I did allow the data to flow on by, I knew what choice I wanted to make. And as that became clear, so the commitment to use the support to enable myself to do that also grew really naturally, just by testing it out. Now the, the fourth mainstay, short moments, the, we've had short moments, we had the trainer, we had the written trainings, which are incredibly powerful texts, and then there was the community, and for me the community um, was probably the mainstay that I had the most data about using, and um, I had the most data about other people, Ooh, you know, that's, that's scary, you know, when I'm on my own, I've got all of my stuff going on, but I can, you know, I've got my strategies of dealing with it, you know, the, the antidotes that I use to damp things down and to, to numb my experience or to make myself feel better when I'm feeling sad and lonely and all of these things and I can just carry on in my own little world doing that. But when I'm around other people, they push my buttons and I can't run away and, you know, now I'm, 
committed to, to relying on open intelligence and I allow the data to be there when I'm with other people, it's even worse because there's so much coming up. But I began to see that I could allow myself to feel all of these things. You know, there was such power in this defencelessness, in allowing myself to be exactly as I was, with all of the data raging, even if it was just for a short moment. And that was incredible for me to see, to see that I didn't have to run away. I didn't have to run to my safe little cabin in the mountains where nobody could see me and all my hideous thoughts and emotions and you know, sensations in the body and that I could actually allow it to be as it was. And it was such a relief. And it didn't feel comfortable all of the time. It didn't feel easy. And so that's why the support was needed. And I began to see that with the help of the support, I could actually be me and be myself totally and completely as I was. I didn't have to hide anymore or pretend anymore. Or, you know, pretend I was always happy. You know, because that's what I thought, that was one of my ideas. When I'm around other people, then I need to be happy. I can't show my sadness, or I can't be miserable, or I can't be bored, or any of these things and instead allowing myself to be completely honest and true about everything I'm feeling. And that defencelessness was incredible power, because I had then nothing holding me back from expressing this natural benefit. There was no hidden agendas going on. I could be myself, and much to my surprise and my wonder, I discovered that when I was being myself, I was naturally of benefit. Naturally of benefit. And um, it, was a, it was a huge, it was a shock actually, it was just, uh, you know, completely unexpected. I'd had all of these ideas about who I was, you know, what my identity was and how I needed to protect it and guard it and build it up and you know, project out these ideas of, of what I wanted other people to see me as and you know, a strong man or a, a funny person or a, you know, all of these ideas and instead to allow myself to be completely open. It was so new. I'd never done that before. I'd always had all of these ideas between me and my relationship with the world and with other people. And, in, and I was a allowing them just to be as they were, allowing them to flow on by, and seeing that I didn't need to guard or protect or defend anything. I could just be myself. And so there was this sense of relief for myself personally. But more than that, I began to see that naturally this desire to be of benefit that I'd known so strongly when I was younger could begin to express itself in, in a really normal, uncontrived way. I didn't have to make grand statements or you know, find a cure for cancer. I could just be a, a normal human being and support and help and enjoy the company of other people from a position of complete openness. But because it was new, because it felt scary, short moments were great. You know, I didn't have to make this huge leap into the unknown, I could just touch my toe in, just one short moment at a time. What's it going to be like in this moment to allow the data to be there? And this feels really scary, I've never done this before. I'll just do a short moment and see what happens, and I can test it out. And in that way the confidence was gained. Every time I took a short moment, the results were immediate and they were always beneficial. So I tested it out. And that's how I be began to see this confidence in really allowing myself to be exactly as I was, with all of my crazy data, you know, strange emotions and weird thoughts and all of it could just be allowed to be exactly as it was, to flow on by. I had nothing to be afraid of anymore. I didn't have to be afraid of myself. I didn't have to be afraid of other people. I didn't have to be afraid of the data that other people seemed to provoke in me. All of it was this shining display of complete beneficial potency. But that could only be seen when I allowed it to be as it was, and recognised it as inseparable from this opening intelligence, one short moment at a time. And to see this for yourself is key. This, all the ideas we've built up around everything, including something like enlightenment. I mean, I, 
I used to read books about enlightenment for years and years and years, reading all of these books and reading about people talking about it and their experiences of it. And, um, and I worked out that it was something that I should have. It was something that I didn't have. It was something that a few people had. I had no idea how to get it. I had no idea what it was. And I was supposed to dedicate my life on this search for this thing that I didn't know where it was, how to get it, or anything about it, really. And instead to be introduced to something about yourself that is of immediate benefit to yourself and everybody else. This is actually what interests me. Not ideas about you know, what the meaning of life is or these incredible exalted states. Opening intelligence includes all descriptions, it includes all states from the most sublime, ecstatic, blissful states. I was going to be really crude, but just to, to, to the most mundane experiences in life. All of it equally included. Everything shining forth equally and evenly from exactly the same total open-heartedness. This is the real power. This is the real understanding as to the nature of reality and the nature of mind not to try and chase after some idea that you've read about in a book, but to get to know yourself exactly as you are. And this is getting real. And um, I, I never really meditated. I tried a few times and um, my mind just seemed far too busy. And um, yeah, I remember sitting there and thinking, oh yeah, right, I've got to still my mind, I've got to still my mind, and all of this stuff going on, and, and the thoughts would stop, and then I'd be, oh, I stopped thinking. Oh no, damn, that was another thought, wasn't it? And then looking, looking, at, the, looking at the clock and think, oh, that, that, you know, that's, oh, it's been hours, hasn't it? And, oh, it's two minutes, it was only two minutes. And, you know, it's, uh, and if you enjoy meditation, that's great, but then you can also apply short moments there. You know, you can apply short moments to whatever you're doing. If you're meditating, if you're walking along the road, if you're speaking to someone, if you're feeling sick, all of it is an opportunity to train up in the actual nature of your mind. Everything becomes this opportunity. I, I used to come to India before I met Balanced View and, um, and I always loved coming to India but it's an interesting benchmark now having been introduced to this training and my experience of travelling through India and, um, and previously there, would, there, would, there was a lot of tension around particularly travelling in India, you know, when you're sat on the beach and you know, it's quite easy to allow things just to relax and be as they are. Although often then I was so caught up in all of my thoughts that you know, I couldn't understand how people relaxed and lay on the beach because I'd lie there for like three minutes and I, you know, there'd be so much going on. I was like, how can I sit here and lie here? You know, they don't they know what's going on in my head. And, <laughs> but now... Um, and so then I travel through <coughs> India and that would be really challenging, you know, when you're tired and it's hot and, you know, and, and you feel like someone's trying to rip you off and, you know, the train's like four hours late and, you know, all of this stuff going on and the hotel's booked that when you get there and you've made your reservation and, you know, the manager just to, refuses to acknowledge it and, you know, all, yeah, just everything going on, all of these challenges and before... You know, there'd be these big blowouts of just total frustration and anger and you know, somebody would be the object of my, you know, this, this anger and this, this frustration. That, and, and I could see that that would happen at various points throughout my journey. And then, um, having been introduced to the training um, six years ago, again in this room, I remember travelling through India three years ago and um, we travelled through India and visited Varanasi and were there for Shivaratri and this huge festival and crowds of people and, and at the end of this sort of long journey of, of I don't know, four or five weeks all, all round India and we, just to stop and see that that was incredible we did all of that journey and there wasn't one incident that there wasn't one cross word there wasn't one moment where even the frustration and irritation and tiredness might have been felt. It wasn't taken as an excuse to, 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 to dump that on somebody. It was allowed to be as it was. And that was, for me, was an incredible benchmark. And now when I travel through India, I, I, it's, just, it's just such a love fest. It's really, I just love everybody. You know, and it's, it, 
it's completely easeful, even when things don't go as you expect. There's this, this fluidity and this flexibility and this openness to just respond in a way that will be of most benefit. And it all happens so easily. Now your life has always been a completely spontaneous display. It's always been like that. All that's happening when you get introduced to your fundamental nature is that that gets more and more obvious. And the easeful nature of this seamless display grows brighter and brighter. And in allowing it just to flow on by, that beneficial potency is expressed in complete ease. That's part of this seamless, easeful flow, your expression of complete beneficial potency. And you just get used to that one short moment at a time. You settle into it, you touch your toe into the water and test it. And then you use the rest of the mainstays to train this up. For me this is just clear that this is what I want to spend my time doing, this is how I want to spend my life, and I'll do whatever is required to train that up. There's no end to how far this can be taken, that, that's up to you. But it does require you to decide to use the support that's there. <coughs>